Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Dr. Hal El Gindi, head of the genetic unit, pediatrics, Calgary University. Um, I will be explaining to you some of the features that would help you to identify cases of Down syndrome, trisomy 21. In the next two slides, we will be looking at the eye and the ear in cases of Down syndrome. The eye, I want you to notice the epicanthal folds that are skin folds of the upper eyelids covering the inner corner of the eye. The slanted febrile fissure upwards and the brush fields folds white spots on the iris. Also, the ears, they are usually malformed, low hypoplastic, uh, and it's usually associated with the, some risk of hearing loss, ear infections, and frequent otitis media. So, as we said now, this is a picture of the case of Down syndrome. We said we will look at the eye, and we will notice the palpebral fissure of the eye is slanted upwards and we will look at the medial epicanthal fold of the eye we find that the epicanthal fold the extra skin fold of the upper eyelid that's usually present in the inner corner of the eye also we will see in the next slide the brush field spots in this slide, you notice that the ears are small and they are usually malformed or hypoplastic. And if we take a line drawn from the outer angle of the eye to the occiput, we would find that the ear usually lies below this line. And so we call it a low set ear. So now we are looking at the eye of the case of trisomy 21 Down syndrome. We find that the upward slanting of the palpebral fissure, the opening of the eye is slanted upwards laterally. And we find that there is a, the epicanthal fold, this is the skin fold, medially present uh, at the inner corner of the eye, a skin fold. This is one of the features we find in the eye of cases of Down syndrome, epicanthal fold, we'll find also the brush field spots. What are the brush field spots? These are the white spots, little white spots on the surface of the iris, arranged in ring concentric uh, with the uh, circle of the pupil. This usually because of aggregation of uh, some connective tissue of uh, the normal uh, tissue of the iris, making these white spots, which is usually uh, when you find them are uh, more or less diagnostic of Down syndrome. Cases of Down syndrome usually are characteristically having a flat face and a flat occiput as if it's squashed head. Brassicaphaly is the flatness of the occiput and it makes the head flat from behind. While mid-face hypoplasia and the nasal bridge being flattened, this gives me the appearance of the flattened face. Besides, usually there is excessive skin behind the neck okay in the next coming slides we want to look at the crease characteristically on the palm of the hand that can be found with cases of down syndrome the simian crease and the clinodactyly which is the incurving of the little finger also we would look at the foot to see the sandal sign which is the gap between first and second toe here is an example of the palm of the hand of cases of Down syndrome trisomy 21 with the characteristic transverse simian crease. Again, a hand, the palm, with the characteristic transverse simian crease in the case of Down syndrome trisomy 21. Also, if we look at the foot of the same case of Down syndrome trisomy 21, this is the gap between the big toe and the second toe which is called the saddle sign. 
Please, during examining and taking a sheet for a case of Down syndrome and trisomy 21, never forget that you're to ask the mother about the motor and the mental development of the cases of Down syndrome. You know the schedules, you have about the milestones for the intellectual abilities, for the mental development or for the motor development. You need to revise, you need to study by heart to know exactly what's to be uh, assessed so that if the mother says that he is late, you know why late. بيقعد عند قد ايه بيقف عند قد ايه بيسلب راسه من الاول عند قد ايه السوشيال سمايل فوكاليزيشن اول مره بيبتدي يقول كلمات كل الارقام اللي عندكم دي في النورمال جروث باترنز لازم تبقى حافظينها كويس جدا وعارفينها عشان تقدر تقدر فعلا ان هو ليت منتال اند موتور ديفلوبمنت ولا برضه بسالها اذا كان متاخر عن الاولاد اللي من دوره ولا لا لان سمبلي الانتلكتشوال ديسابيلتي ان هو بقى ليت في المنتال ديفلوبمنت والبور جروث ان هو بقى ليت في الموتور ديفلوبمنت بسايدز طبعا ان احنا لازم هناخد الماجرمنتس بتاعته علشان نقدر نشوف السيركمفرنس بتاعه واللينث والويت ونحطه على الايج بتاعه بالظبط ونشوف اذا كان هو فعلا في بور جروث ولا لا Other general characteristics of um, symptoms and signs of down syndrome we find sometimes in some of the cases hypodontia which is the developmental absence of one or more teeth The poor growth is very important in diagnosing cases of Down syndrome. Okay, to say poor growth, I have to know the normal physical growth. What's the average weight for age? What's the average length for age? What's the average head circumference for age? And comparing this with the physical growth of the case of Down syndrome or the trisomy 21, this would diagnose that Poor growth is usually one of the important features in those cases. So you have to study well the normal for the physical growth, the average weight, the average length or height for age and the average head circumference for age. Also the motor development. It is the development of the motor skills as sitting, standing and walking. Usually you find them delayed in cases of Down syndrome. The mental development, the development of the mental skills. At the social development and speech and usually those also are delayed in cases of down syndrome 20 trisomy 21 and we call it an intellectual disability these are important features in cases of down syndrome so when you're examining a case of down syndrome you have to take the skull circumference to see the width of the anterior and posterior fontanelle in the length height and skull circumference and weight you have to know all the features of the normal physical growth compared to the growth of the case to be able to diagnose if there is poor growth in the motor development the mental development and compare them with the case of down syndrome through if there is any intellectual disability or not it's a very important features in cases of down syndrome if we say how to diagnose down syndrome in very short their characteristic faces and characteristic features besides the poor growth, the hypotonia, the delayed motor and mental development, and the associated other congenital anomalies if found. Very important features also in Down syndrome trisomy 21 is the hypotonia, which is usually associated with recurrent chest infection, also associated other congenital anomalies example like congenital heart disease mainly uh, av canal defects uh, vsd low ventricular receptor defect so in any case of down syndrome we have to examine the chest and heart and we have to examine for hypotonia So if we suspect a case of Down syndrome trisomy 21 with characteristic features, 
and delayed milestones of development poor growth motor and mental delay in the upward slanting of the eyelids as we said and you can see it in this picture too uh, upward slanting of palpebral fissure and uh, with the epicanthal folds uh, we have uh, brush field spots low set ears the ears are below the line drawn from the outer angle of the eye to the occiput the flat nose and the flat occiput the brassicephaly and you find in this case also maybe uh, the findings also in the hand and foot as we said settled sign and semi increase if you suspect a case and you go for a chromosomal study which is the karyotyping you find in your book that we also say non disjunction cases occur in most of the cases uh, about 94% or more and it's associated with advanced maternal age so what's that non disjunction I'll just in very short tell you okay this is a karyotype a chromosomal study for a case which was suspected to be Down syndrome trisomy 21 was suspected because of the characteristic uh, facial features and the other features associated the case had also congenital heart disease and the delay motor mental uh, development in this case we find that the chromosomes also always in the karyotype are arranged in groups the 22 uh, chromosome uh, pairs first uh, as the autosomes and lastly the 23rd chromosome which is the x and y this was a boy okay we find that the chromosomes usually we identify them and they arrange in the karyotype according to the length of the chromosomes we'll find that the long ones are come first and the short ones come at the end the uh, banding and the uh, site of the centromere anyway i want you only to look at the arrow in this case the chromosome 21 there is uh, not a pair of chromosome but there are three three chromosome 21 this is the trisomy 21 so what happened in this case none disjunction okay we have the parents they have normal chromosome 21 pair and the non disjunction occurs during meiosis one parent creates two normal gametes as you see at the first and then the next step you find that the other parent creates two gametes where one gamete contains two copies of chromosome 21 and the other gamete is empty with no copy of chromosome 21 and it is non-viable So the next step that will happen after that, that fertilization will occur between one gamete containing a normal one copy of chromosome 21 and another abnormal gamete that contain the two copies of the chromosome 21 ending in a zygote with three copies of chromosome 21. And as you know, as I said already, the non-disjunction is usually at it, uh, the risk is uh, increased with marked uh, advanced maternal age the non disjunction although is the major cause but the the translocation the non disjunction uh, the translocation is the second cause of the non disjunction and it's also very important because um, there is a um, genetic counseling uh, concerning this translocation and the parents are usually uh, they need to know about this genetic uh, counseling I'll explain it in short okay in this slide it is very clear how the translocation ends up in one-third of the offsprings chromosome uh, triple uh, chromosome 21 the trisomy 21 and third possibility is a normal uh, offspring and third possibility is a translocation carrier I'll explain in short why we have the two parents one parent has uh, in uh, two chromosome 14 and two chromosome red the 14 is longer so two blue and two red the other parent has the chromosome 14 one of them is attached translocated 
on the chromosome 21 direct. And he has beside it a normal chromosome 14 and a normal chromosome 21 red. So what will happen? The gametes from the parent who has two chromosome 14 not attached to the two chromosomes 21, he have two identical gametes. This is the up line in the slide where uh, chromosome 14 alone stands beside the chromosome 21, the red one alone in the two gametes. While the other parent who has the translocated chromosome 14 from group D over the chromosome 21 from group G, we will find that all possible gametes that you can imagine can happen. And this actually happens, six possibilities. Either chromosome 21 can be standalone, chromosome 14 can stand alone, uh, a normal chromosome 14 with a chromosome 21 can stand alone, a translocation can stand alone, and in the first two gametes from this parent, also you can see that a chromosome 21 can go with the translocated um, uh, chromosome. Uh, it's as if the translocated chromosome acts with during um, uh, forming the gametes as if it's one chromosome, so the other chromosome by mistake would go with it. So we will have two chromosomes red with one blue and also the other possibility that only the 14 go with the translocated chromosome. So we will find one chromosome 14 with the translocated chromosome, which is chromosome 14 attached to 21. What will happen in the offsprings? In the all possibilities of the offsprings from the normal parent, they will go uh, one chromosome 14 and one chromosome, the red uh, 21 normal. But the possibilities that will be associated is from the other parent who had the translocation carrier. In the first offspring, we find that we have actually the single chromosome 21 went with the translocation and normal chromosome 14 chromosome 21 from the normal parent. In this case, if we count, we will find that two chromosomes 14 are in this offspring in the cell and three of chromosome 21, which means I have a case of Down syndrome trisomy 21. In the next offspring, I find that I have three chromosomes 14, three blue and two red, which means I have a trisomy 4 chromosome 14. This is not viable, you will not continue. In the third offspring, I have only one chromosome um, 14 and two chromosome 21. This is a monosomy for chromosome 14, and it will be not viable and die also. And in the fourth offspring, there is a monosomy for chromosome 21, one chromosome red and two blue, and it will die also. Okay, till now, we have three non-viable offsprings. Only one viable, the one was Down syndrome, the first one, trisomy 21. Also, there is a possibility that we have a normal child with two chromosome 14 and two chromosome 21, two blue and two red, and to have a translocation carrier with one chromosome 14 and one chromosome red normal and one chromosome 14 attached to chromosome uh, 21. And in such case, we have a translocation carrier. So actually, the offsprings one third for genetic counseling will be a Down syndrome, one third will be a normal child, and one third will be a translocation carrier. So we will find the possibilities, as we said, that the monosomy 21, the monosomy 14, the trisomy 14 will be non viable. The four possibility is normal offspring, this one third of the outcome, fifth possibility of translocation carrier, one third of the outcome, and the possibility of trisomy 21, this is one third of the outcome. The inheritance Down syndrome is either, as we said, the most common and disjunction over 90% and 95% uh, also, and the uh, possibility of non um, uh, translocation carriers and to have uh, uh, either a uh, translocation carrier, normal child, or a trisomy 21, one third possibility from each. And uh, also there is mos mosaicism where you have two cell lines, some cells with the 46 chromosome and one and some cells of 47 chromosome. Uh, this is ab around 1% of the cases. So can we do karyotyping to fetal cells in triterine? Uh, yes, we can test uh, by the invasive techniques for uh, coronic villus sampling or amniocentesis uh, to uh, test fetal cells uh, and do karyotyping for them, usually after 12 weeks uh, gestation. 
Uh, also, there are uh, new techniques now developing for detecting free fetal cells in maternal blood to do karyotyping in an uninvasive way. So, as we see this picture again of the case of Down syndrome, trisomy 21, we revise again. In this case, you have the palpebral fissure with upward slanting, the hypoplasia um, or the flat nose, and which is accompanied usually with flat mid face. We have the low set ear, a line drawn from the lateral angle of the eye to the occiput is just touching the upper edge of the ear. It is low set ear. And uh, this uh, child, he looks smiling and happy usually. Children with trisomy 21 Down syndrome are uh, happy children and you can help them a lot. For example, when we uh, examine the ear and it uh, needs assess, uh, assessment for the hearing, they um, are helped a lot by correcting the hearing defect. Uh, if there is associated hypothyroidism, which is alone can cause mental retardation, the hypothyroidism has to be uh, aggressively uh, treated hormone therapy. Um, other anomalies, if there is associated with congenital heart, duodenal atresia has to be treated. Cases of Down syndrome, if they are cared for, not only by taking them for a, a early intervention, physiotherapy, special schooling, but by being loved, the best exercises for training, for intervention, early, motor, and uh, for speech are those done by the mother after being uh, trained and loving them is always very um, praying back. Uh, the cases of Down syndrome usually are happy, loving children, and they could be taught and be a valuable contribution uh, to the society. So uh, I'll tell you again in short how to diagnose these cases from the first spotting of the case. Revising again the features in cases of Down syndrome that you would search for to diagnose the case. You have to look at the eye, the upward slanting of the palpebral fissure, and the presence of extra skin fold medially, which is the epicanthal fold, could uh, find brush field spots on the iris if you examine the iris, and a short nose which is flattened with the mid face flattened and usually the flat face and the flat occiput, the brassicephaly are one of the diagnostic features, the hypotonia, you can find associated umbilical hernia and you can find the congenital heart disease associated also and sometimes duodenal atresia. Other findings, we find the transverse line of the seeming crease on the palm of the hand, the saddle sign, the gap between the big toe and the other little toes. You find that the little finger can be incurved, called clinoductly, and the hands are short and broad, and you have to search for other uh, findings that uh, could um, identify the case because of growth failure, mental retardation, and hypotonia. Here again, you can find the characteristic faces of cases of Down syndrome uh, with the low set ear uh, below the line drawn from the angle lateral of the eye backwards, the flattened and small short nose, the um, upward slanting of the palpebral fissure, and the brassicaphaly, the flat occiput very characteristic faces, you have to get used to it to easily diagnose the case. Here also there are more cases of Down syndrome, the characteristic faces, uh, to get used to the characteristic faces to be easily picked and diagnosed for cases of Down syndrome. This is also a case of Down syndrome with the characteristic facias and the semi increase in the hand, the low set ear, the upward slanted palpebral fissure, the flat uh, uh, nose and mid face, the uh, brassicaphaly, the uh, in curving of the little finger in the hand. It has some delay in motor mental development, but they actually 
once they are very well cared for with early intervention to improve their uh, abilities, motor and mental, and well trained, continuously followed by special schooling and by a lot of love and care, they're usually happy children with a very strong, useful contribution to society. Thank you very much.